We've already talked about how rocks break down in the last lecture on weathering. And this is what happens as those little pieces of sediment get moved around, um, as they get moved from one place to another, as those loosened, dissolved, or worn away pieces of rocks get transported, we call that erosion. All right, and the major agents of erosion are wind, the little sediments get blown away, water, especially around streams, rivers, or water coming off of a mountain, gravity, those little sediments or rocks falling down a mountainside, and ice, as in glaciers, pushing rocks with them. So as the rock weather, they don't always stay where they weathered from. A lot of times they get moved away. And this moving away is erosion. So erosion is the moving of the sediments. Now, we can talk about erosion not only in terms of rocks, we can also talk about it in terms of soil. And where this comes into play for us here in environmental earth science is we are also looking at the impact of the changes to the environment on humans and our impact on the environment itself. And so certain farming and ranching practices cause soil to erode or soil to move away. So this is, this is just, soil erosion is just soil being carried somewhere else or elsewhere by the agents of erosion, those wind and water agents, mostly the wind and water. So some scientists, not all of them, think that soil erosion is one of the greatest environmental problems that we have right now, and that's because without soil, we cannot grow crops. And if we can't grow crops, we can't feed people. And that leads to hunger issues and famine. Erosion itself, as I said, one of the major agents of erosion is gravity. Gravity can play a big role. And when we look at a mass movement of, set of settlement, a mass um, amount of weathered rock moving down a slope, down a mountainside, we can call that mass weathering. All right, sometimes this is very fast and rapid, like um, the, a landslide that we saw. Um, if you were in one of the classes that saw the landslide at Mount St. Helens. Or sometimes it can just occur slowly as rock would normally fall down a mountainside. The two most dramatic, the two most destructive, the two most well-known types of mass weathering or mass erosion, rock falls and landslides. All right, pretty much if rocks are falling from a steep cliff, we're calling it a rock fall. If we have a lot of loose rock and soil, it's this combined with the soil part, so dirt as well going down the slope, that is a landslide. These can be tri triggered by rainfalls, spring thaws, which also bring in lots of water, and then volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, which tend to go together, can cause these landslides or rockfalls. So pretty much it's either water or some tectonic activity like a, a volcanic eruption or an earthquake. Here's a picture right here of a rockfall. What you can see is a bunch of rocks have fell. All right, that's why it's called a rockfall. You don't see a whole lot of dirt or mud there. You just see big chunks and pieces of rock that fell from somewhere up there. In a landslide, you can see this landslide devastated this town right here. All the rock, soil, probably trees just slid or came off this hillside or this mountainside here. And what you see is not only rock, but more than chunks of rock, you see all the mud and soil and dirt as well. That's the difference between a rock fall, just rocks, landslide, you see the mud and dirt. Another major, major agent of erosion we talked about was water. 
all right? And when we talk about erosion of water, we're talking about streams and rivers. And rivers go through a type of evolution, a type of change over time. All right? And as a river gets older, it starts to bend or twist or curve as it goes downhill. These are called a meander. And what we can see here is we got this one right here. That's a meander. Here's another meander and another one another one, and all these curves along the river are the meanders. And the big thing we see is along the outside of the curve, the velocity of the water, which is just a fancy scientific name for speed, of the water increases. And on the inside of the curve, the velocity decreases. And here's the thing, high speed equals high erosion. So the faster the water is moving, the more rock and stuff it can take with it, the faster the rocks and the banks of the river will erode. So what happens is we got this decrease in velocity on the inside, and we can get a bar or um, a bunch of deposited settlement all right, on the inside of the curves. And as this happens, eventually those bars will fill in and we'll get a loop. So we get the water comes in. Originally, it's, it's moving along this meander down here, but sediment keeps building up on this inner edge right here, and erosion keeps cutting away this outer edge. Well, the same thing's happening over here. Sediment builds up on the inner edge of the loop, erosion cuts away that outer edge of the loop, and we get a complete loop instead, where it used to meander around we get this complete loop. With that loop, as the water moves, it keeps pushing the sediment into there and eventually will break off the entire loop from, from the river. The river will get straighter and you'll be left with something called an oxbow lake, which is this meander, the curved part of the river, that got left behind. So at some point this river will just go along this yellow line straight path and we'll be left with lakes. There'll be an oxbow lake here, here's an oxbow lake, here's an and that will eventually be an oxbow lake. Alright, this says stream Deposition. Alright, and it talks about something called a delta and something else called an alluvial fan, and we'll talk about the alluvial fan in the next couple of slides. But a delta is a fan shaped mass of rock, and this happens at the mouth of a stream. So where the stream empties. Alright, so what you get is you get this this delta or a triangle shape. or fan-shaped bunch of rocks where the uh, where the water comes in so or the water leaves the stream so if this is our river coming up here as it hits the water it'll spread out like that let me get another color here alright if like this is the Sure. Alright, the water will spread out in this fan shaped area, and that is called a delta if it's in water.
Right here's a picture of a very famous delta. Right there's our river. And this is the delta right in here where I'm drawing these blue lines. This is the Nile River Delta as it goes into the Mediterranean Ocean or the Mediterranean Sea. All right, and what you can see is that it spreads out as a fan and drops a lot of the sediments because as the water hits the ocean, it slows down. As it slows down, it can't carry as much stuff with it, so it drops a lot of the sediment and it fans out in this area. An alluvial fan is another fan-shaped mass of rock material deposited by a stream, but it is on land and not in the water. All right, a lot of times we see this when streams descend a steep slope, when they come off of a mountain and then hit a flat plain. Again, the speed of the stream decreases as the water spreads out, and that we get these deposits that again make this fan triangle shape. The big difference between alluvial fans and deltas Right in here, alluvial fans form on lands, deltas in the water. All right, so here we go again. Here's the stream, and then there's the spread out, and that is on land, so that is an alluvial fan. So. Alluvial fan on land. Delta in water. But they are pretty much the same thing. It just depends on whether it's hitting land or water. Land, you get the alluvial fan. Water comes in the delta. A floodplain is usually where this alluvial fan is forming, or it's any other part of a valley floor that gets covered with water and is prone to flooding. All right, and the amount of water that all streams or in, in all the streams um, varies depending on the amount of rainfall and snow melt in the watershed. And a watershed is the area drained by a river. Or stream. All right, so all of the water that falls near the Genesee River flows into the Genesee River. So you'll see signs as you drive around, and you have to look for them. But if you pay enough attention as you're driving around the Genesee Valley or the Genesee River area, you'll see signs that say Genesee River Watershed. And any water that falls there eventually makes its way into the Genesee River. It gets drained by that river or stream. Now, as we have rivers that, that sometimes overflow, as a stream or a river overflows, it starts to lose velocity, lose speed, and will deposit its sediments all right, along the banks of the channel. So if you remember when we had the flooding a few months ago and we saw pictures of the towns that flooded, it looked like they were all muddy and yucky and gross. Well, the whole reason they were all muddy is the water came up over the edge, just like in this picture here, we have the water comes up over the edges and as it spreads out, it slows down and it leaves a layer of mud and sediment. And it leaves even a higher layer of mud and sediment right at the bank. And so as these muds and sediment accumulate, we call them natural levees. As opposed to a levee where we build, where we build up the banks of a river to try to keep floodwaters at bay. So we already talked just a second ago about those artificial levees. That's building up the banks... Of a, of a river 
Uh, if you watch the Weather Channel or certain channels around springtime, you'll see people near the Mississippi River or the Missouri River and start piling up sandbags on either side of the river. What those sandbags do is they make the shoreline a little higher and try to keep the flooding from the river from um, taking over their town. All right, another direct um, type direct method, I guess, of, of flood control is building dams or stopping up a river in a big basin and then controlling how much water goes through. The other big thing that helps prevent floods are foil and soil conservation. All right. The more trees are in an area, the more roots of those trees in an area, the less soil erodes. The less soil erodes, the more stuff can grow. Alright, so we want to avoid excess runoff when there's lots of rain. And that should help allow an area to drain better. But we also use more direct methods, such as dams and, and the artificial levees. And um, that's about it. I mean, it, I know it was kind of quick little stuff. We hit on a lot of topics, but, but just to do a quick review, erosion, moving sediments away from where they weathered from or the rocks they weathered from, the erosion is moving them away. Water and gravity are two of the big agents of erosion. And so is wind. And as we talk about water erosion, we're looking at rivers. Rivers erode their banks faster when they are moving faster and then as rivers slow down they deposit the sediments that they're carrying with them and you'll see some of this in the lab coming up known as the the river lab or the stream table lab where you'll get to see moving water carry sediments and you'll see a nice delta or alluvial fan made um, i guess it would be considered an alluvial fan because we're not really making it underwater so then it would not be a delta and that is pretty much it for, uh, for this lecture and for this unit. So if you have any questions, write them down, ask them in class. If you do not, study hard. Um, your test is coming up. Use the study guide. Use the websites. And uh, once again, have a nice night.